Hello, this is Jimmy Mitchell, back in our episode of the Libertarian Censored Podcast, going over all the posts on the Libertarian Censored subreddit. Let's get right into it. So first we have Cause and Solution, the founders on political violence from Anarcho-Federation, and that's a YouTube video from uh, Tenth Amendment Center. And I said, and they had said, a frightful dispossessism, that's what George Washington predicted, we get, we get with a combo of factions and ur usurpation of power, but he was far from alone in warning against what leads to political violence, ignoring their warnings and solution only guarantees the worst is yet to begin. And I said in response, the founders did engage in political violence though, it was called the American Revolutionary War for a reason. And they said in response, if you watch the video, that's not the political violence they're referencing. It's about party politics and its consequences. The revolutionary generation found violence to measure necessary for the violation of the Constitution. I'm not someone who rejects violence as a tool myself. And I guess I would agree if they, you know, ultimately, if people want to use political violence, you know, I think they should be able to use political violence. But that being said, you know, I do think it should be stigmatized for a reason. And that's my thoughts on that issue. Then we have Alex Jones and Infowars called for assassination of Trump from the right months ago from Maddie O'Clock, and that's a, a post on X from Patriot Takes. Five months ago, Alex Jones and Infowars guest even right, right Lynn, discussed how assassinating Trump would be beneficial according to them because it would likely lead to retaliatory in kind assassinations of a deep state list, which includes President Joe Biden. And I said in response, Alex Jones also got fined like a billion dollars for saying that Sandy Hook was staged, something that the people who say Trump's assassination was staged will never get fined for. And that's my thoughts on that issue. Then we have Vance emerges as Trump's VP pick with Rubio and Bergam out from the Hill, and I posted that, and I said, Not the best choice in my opinion. Vance is young, but mostly appeals to groups that Trump's already sure to win, whites and rural, such as whites and rural people. And that's my thoughts on that issue. Then... We have, I know nobody cares, but the reason that this New Yorker cover is so dumb, among many reasons, is Amy Coney Barrett has repeatedly voted against Trump and the conservative majority, while John Roberts got a decisive vote to save Obamacare. But this is how liberals see the world. And that's a tweet from Glenn Greenwald, and that was him quote tweeting Philip Lewis' latest cover of The New Yorker, and it's the Supreme Court, but all the re Republican appointing justices are now just replaced with Donald Trump. And I said in response, no one lives, no one lives rent free in the minds of the left more than Donald J. Trump. And that's my thoughts on that issue. Then we have Trump pick Senator J.D. Vance of Ohio, once fierce critic turned loyal allies, his GOP running mate from APNews.com by Zash Ness. And I went over that earlier, so let's we'll move on to the next post. Then we have Tour de France reintroduces mask mandate amid COVID-19 concerns from CyclingNews.com. And I, and I posted that and I said... As a private organization, I think that they should be able to do so, but mask mandates are definitely something best left back in 2020, not that they were justified then either. And that's my thoughts on that issue. Then we have Biden to, um, to unveil plan to cap rents from by Lemon Line Light, and they, added, and they said from the Washington Post, Biden to unveil plan to cap rents as GOP convention begins. President Biden will unveil a new proposal in Nevada on Tuesday to cap rent rental costs nationwide, according to free people familiar with the matter, as he works to assuage Democratic concerns about the viability of his candidacy while the Republican convention gets underway. The policy push reflects the White House's efforts to respond to widespread voter anger over high housing prices, which have soared since the pandemic and undermined Biden's standing among voters about the economy. Nevada has seen among the biggest explosions of housing costs in the country, and Democrats have grown increasingly concerned that Trump could win the state in November. Biden's plan, which would need to be approved by Congress, calls for stripping a tax benefit from landlords who increase their tenants' rent more than 5% per year, the people said. The measure would only apply to landlords with more than who own more than 50 units, which well, represents roughly half of all rental properties, the people said. It wouldn't cover units that had not been, yet been built in an attempt to ensure that the policy does not discourage construction of a new rental housing. And I said in response, Comrade Biden added again. You know, that's what really it is. It really is we have the election between Comrade Biden and Comrade Trump, and both of them are leading us into communism, I would say. And that's my thoughts on that issue. Then we have Biden cites the farcical FBI assisted plot to kidnap Gretchen Whitmer as an example of political violence from Reason.com. And I posted that and I said, most political violence in the U.S. is usually fed to be fair. And that's my thoughts on that issue. 
Then we have, it's a shame the person, shooter, miss, next breath, I'm scared of political violence, these people are legit insane, from Lives of TikTok on Twitter, and I posted that, and I, and, and I, in response, only the left is allowed to use political violence to people like them, otherwise it's the worst thing ever, and then I posted the line, Spongebob, me and Tech, you know, if every, 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 every alert are capitalized, but the Trump shooter was a registered Republican, yes, but he did what the left wanted, and that's why it's, what why, you know, they, they say, oh, it's a shame that he missed, you know, a lot of people on the left. And that's my thoughts on that issue. Now we have Wyoming bans conservation bidders from oil and gas lease sales, free market for polluters only from wildfile.com by CH for locks, and that's crossroads from the energy subreddit. And I said in response, understandable, oil and gas are what gives us most of our energy and what keeps the supply chain running. I don't expect the subreddit to be able to comprehend that, though. With that being said, I don't think the government should be telling people what they can and can't do. And that's my thoughts on that issue. Then we have, how did we get here from Shadow Dweller 1? That's a video about how, about how a guy, a guy, a, a guy talking for about Madam. How do we let ourselves, uh, we, we had a revolution over 2% tax on a breakfast beverage. And then, but now we, we were taxed infinitely more and there's no revolution. And they, and they added, how do we allow ourselves to arrive at this point? Is it too big, is it too big to come back from? And I said in response, how we allow ourselves to arrive at this point? Complacency, is this too big to come back from? It very might well be, but that doesn't mean people should just roll over for the government. And that's my thoughts on that issue. And we have, J.D. Vance says he wouldn't have certified 2020 race until states submitted pro-Trump electors. The senator also suggested Trump should ignore illegitimate court rulings from abcnews.go.com by Swamp Yankee Dan. And, um... Yeah, I personally think, you know, if, if if no no one should be forced to do anything they don't want to do. If he didn't want to certify, that's on him. But, you know, ultimately, it gets, it's going to come down to who has the force and capital to do what. And that's my thoughts on that issue. Then we have U.S. Senator Menendez convicted at corruption trial, cementing political downfall from Reuters.com by Dr. Who 07. And I guess that's good. Hopefully they kick me out of the Senate soon, but we'll see what happens, I guess, you know. It, you know, maybe maybe it'll just blow over. I don't know if he's convicted, you know. You know, it's interesting. Donald Trump, you know, he gets convicted of something. And he's a convicted felon. But I don't think anyone's going to be referring to Menendez as a convicted felon nearly as much. And that's my thoughts on that issue. Then we have Newsom Signs Bill banning schools from notifying parents about student gender identity from LATimes.com by Lemon Limelight. And I said in response... Socialists regard your property as their property, but even more nefariously, they regard your children as their property. From Michael, and that's a quote from Michael Malice. You know, ultimately, I think you know if the if if they want to keep it secret, I think that's fine. But I don't think the state should be enforcing them to keep it secret. You know, I personally would, would, would think our education system should be as open as possible with kids about what kids are going through. But sadly, that doesn't seem to be the world we live in. We seem to live in the world where the state control believes that your kids belong to them and not the parents. Then we have Trump has in contact with the family of his supporter who died during the assassination attempt. His wife told the New York Post from businessinsider.com by CH for locks. My husband was a devout Christian and th that he would have mom would want to be talked to him. Hey, Helen Compator said she did not think Biden was responsible for her husband's death. She told the Post she is voting for Trump but that she's not very involved in politics. I don't have any ill will towards Joe Biden, she said, adding, he didn't do anything to my husband. A 20-year-old despicable kid did. And I would agree with that, you know, ultimately, you know, I think Trump should probably contact his supporters, the, 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 that woman, but ultimately, you know, it's his choice of what he wants to do or not, and that's my thoughts on that issue. Then we have RFK Jr. apologizes after a video call of Trump, a video call of Trump leaks showing private comments. We're going to win this clip posted Tuesday from Mediate.com by DH for Locks, and that's a crossword from the In the News subreddit. And, yeah, yeah, um... Uh, uh, personally, I, I would have liked, I would have been interested in a Trump RFK unity ticket, but sadly that's not the world we live in, and, um, yeah, you know, ultimately, um, I don't think this is too much of a story here. Then we have another farce from the fiscal, quote-unquote, fiscal conservatives by CH for Locks, and that's a cross post from the Facepalm subreddit. It's a tweet from Stephen Ratner. Project 2025 shifts taxes from the wealthy to middle class. A family of four earning 100000 would suffer a $2,600 tax site. With a family earning $5 million would get a $325,000 tax cut. And, um, 
Yeah, I don't know how realistic that is. You know, it's always pro they always go Project 2025, Project 2025. You know, I think that's just kind of kind of like the kind of like blue one on. That's my thoughts on that issue. Then we have Johnson to remove George Washington statue from outside the city hall office from Chicago, Chicago, Chicago Tribune via Yahoo News, and I posted that and I said. Relevant video from the Reddit Hive Mind's favorite, John Oliver, and I linked to a video from the, uh, posted by the account, uh, Silent Midnight at Prime Quietly on X. 2017, comedian John Oliver mocking President Trump for suggesting statue of George Washington and Jefferson will be next. Today, Tom Jefferson's statue removed from City Hall after 187 years, he said. And I was like, Trump said, oh, you know, today it's Robert E. Lee and Stonewall Jackson, you know, next week could be Thomas Jefferson and George Washington, and... And, and, you know, and, you know, then he added, like, oh, when, we, when does it stop? And then, you know, John Oliver says, oh, you know, it's got to stop somewhere, you know. You, you, you don't let your kids just eat, twi if you want to eat, let your kids eat scissors, it's you're going to start free basing cocaine, or, I don't know. But, you know, regardless, I said, and regardless, you know, you know it, it's just going to show you that, you know, one day the progressive left, if you're a progressive, one day the progressive left will turn on you for not being progressive enough and after everything you hold dear. And when that day inevitably comes, don't say I never warned you. You know, that's my fault on that issue. You know, you know what the, the progressives will eat their own. But, you know, the progressive left, that's, that's, and that's why I think politics is so divisive these days. The progressive left is going to just keep eating their, eating their own. And soon they'll, it, it, they'll come for, they, they'll come for you if, if they, if they, if they say, if you, if they find you guilty of dissent at all. And that's my thoughts on that issue. Then we have, could Biden be the most libertarian president of our lifetimes? From, and that's a link to an article from MSN.com. Biden's announced support for major Supreme Court changes from the Washington Post. And then, this, that was supposed by Justin Poff, and they added, I can't believe I'm saying this, as I can't point to a single thing he's done I support, but he's also weighing whatever to call for a constitutional amendment to eliminate broad immunity for presidents and other constitutional law officers, people said. Speaking on the condition of a nominee to discuss private deliberations, this is absolutely the most libertarian thing I've seen, ever seen a president actually propose. I'm um, up with proposed term limits and ethics codes from Supreme Court justices, neither of which offends me too much, too much, depending on the details. Although I'm pretty sure the author of the article is probably smarter than me. I'm pretty sure all of those would need a constitutional amendment to be passed. The legislature and executive branch have no constitutional authority over the judicial branch. And I said, and I said in response, you know, in regards to the most libertarian poets of our lifetimes, the bar is so low at this point, set practically in the ground. Then we have revealed Trump campaign secret data on Gunman's family from Channel4.com by Frosty Slawman. And um, yeah, I don't think that is very um, good. Um, that just that just goes to show you how governments and government government uh, and the feds can get can get can track data from whoever they want to, and that's my thoughts on that issue. And ultimately, sometimes there's nothing you can do about it. Then we have Arizona school voucher program causes budget meltdown from ProPublica.org by Ragnar OKXG, and I think this is just you know uh, they don't want school choice. You know I think if people want to fund school choice, I think they should be able to, but you know you do have to budget for that as well, and that's my thoughts on that issue. Now we have Fifth Circuit is going to take another swing at an extre extremely messy library book removal decision from TechDirt.com by Baton 13. And yeah, um, I definitely do think we shouldn't be banning books from schools. If, I think if people want to ban them in school, they should be able to. You know, I don't think I don't really think it's actually to actually consider banning because you know it's just removing them from books from schools that might be considered that kids might not be ready for yet. But that being said, you know, ultimately people will justify what they justify. And yeah, that's my fault on that issue. And we have Federalism Could Heal, a Divided Nation, from, posted by Lemon Limelight, and that's, they said, from Reason, uh, Federalism Could Heal, a Divided Nation, Vicious Rhetoric by Candidates May Fan the Flames of Political Hatred, Recently Fueling the Attempted Assassination of Donald Trump, But Those Flames Were Lit Long Ago to Damp Those Fires, The Best Way to Reduce the Likelihood of Americans with Proposing Views, Battling for Political Controls through the Power of Government, Starting with the Feds. And I would agree with that, you know, ultimately, we need to, re we need to reduce the power of government, and let, 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 and let it get away with a lot more than we let it get away with. And that's my thoughts on that issue. And I think we're going to wrap up there. I'll see you guys in the next episode. Bye.